Hello and thanks for joining me. I'm the Code Pilot. In this episode, we're going to be examining collisions based on overlapping rectangles. There are multiple ways of handling collisions, so I'll be trying to create a video on all the techniques that I feel are important. The links to those videos will be in the description as they're made. But before we start with the coding, let's have a look at what we want to achieve with this episode's code. On the display surface, there are 2000 rectangles that change color when they collide with a rectangle at the mouse position. And just for fun, I've added the ability to stain the rectangles red when the mouse button is pressed. 10 points if you can guess what word I was gonna write there. We'll also be applying the rectangle based collision technique to sprites and look into a significant limitation of it. We'll also be looking into ways to work around that limitation too. Just so we all know how a rectangle is generated on a computer, I'll explain a little bit about them. A rectangle in Pygame is made up of two sets of variables. The first are the x and y coordinates, which describe the top left of the rectangle, and the second are the width and the height. When we're testing for overlapping rectangles, we're also interested in the x and y coordinate at the top left, but also the x and y coordinate at the bottom right. For simplicity's sake, top left will be x1 and y1, and bottom right will be x2 and y2. Now we can look at some code. First thing we need to do is to add two more color variables, red and green. We'll be using the red to highlight the rectangles on collision and green will be used for the rectangle at the mouse location. If you're interested in learning more about colors, then check this video out. The link should appear at the top right now. The next section of our code focuses on building a rectangle class. This stores the location of the rectangle, draws it, and tests for overlap by passing another instance of a rectangle to it. The initialization function requires five parameters, x and y, width and height, and also id. The coordinates we've covered already, so I'll just mention the id. It's basically there to stop a rectangle checking itself for collision. If both rectangles ids match, then there's no need to check for overlap. We're now going to store the parameter values into the instance of the rectangle because we'll definitely be needing them later. So x becomes x1 and y becomes y1. And we'll also create two new variables to store the location of the bottom right of the rectangle, x2 and y2. To make x2 and y2 variables, we simply add width to x and height to y. We'll next store the width and height values because we'll need them later when we go to draw the rectangle to the display surface. The rectangles by default are white, but we'll change color on collision. So fill color will define which is drawn to the display. Because the color variable white is defined outside of this function, it's good practice, in my opinion, to set it as a global variable. If you remember from the first video snippet before, I demonstrated the ability to permanently turn the rectangle red by pressing the mouse button. Well, this action toggles the variable stained to true so that when we go to redraw it to the display, we draw it red instead of the default white. And there's the all important ID value we use to avoid collisions with ourselves. So that's the initialization function done. The next four functions we create are about getting and setting the rectangle's position in a clear and meaningful way. But rather than watch me type each one of them out, I'll skip to the end of the functions and briefly tell you about them. Set XY change to the location of the X1 and Y1 coordinate, and then uses the rectangle's width and height values to recalculate the X2 and Y2 position. We'll use this function to set the coordinates of the first rectangle in a list of rectangles to the mouse position. Get XY returns a tuple of the rectangles X1 and Y1 coordinate. This is so we can pass the tuple to functions in Pygame that require coordinate values in this way. The rect function returns a rectangle in the style Pygame needs to draw a rectangle to the display surface, X and Y, width and height. And as you can see, we've used the classes get XY to build the rect tuple. Cause is a bit like the rect function in that it returns the x1 and y1 values, but instead of returning width and height, it returns x2 and y2. We'll be using this function when we test for a collision later. So that's the four functions that deal with returning and setting the coordinates of the rectangles. Let's now look at the most important function of this class, has collided. The reason I've called this function has collided is because I wanted it to sound like a question with a yes or no answer. 
Well, true or false. The parameter target accepts an instance of a rectangle and we'll be testing that against the self to see if a collision has taken place. Actually, in this script, we'll be doing the opposite. We'll be testing to see if no collision has taken place. On this line of code, we'll be getting the target's four coordinates using its chord function and separating the values into individual variables. In my opinion, this keeps the code looking simple and neat. So before we look at the code for detecting a collision, let's see how it works in theory. Here are two rectangles. Source is the instance defined by self and target is the rectangle parameter passed to the source's has collided function. When determining collision between two rectangles, I ask myself four questions. Is the target's x1 greater than the source's x2? Is the target's x2 less than the source's x1? Is the target's y1 greater than the source's y2? And is the target's y2 less than the source's y1? If any of these questions are true, then no collision has taken place. So to make it easier to understand, we'll have a look at a working example. So here we have two rectangles on the display surface. Let's determine logically if they have collided using the four questions. Is the target's x1 greater than the source's x2? True, which means that no collision has taken place. And we can see for ourselves that the rectangles aren't overlapping. Let's have a look at another one. So, is the target's x1 greater than the source's x2? That's false. Is the target's x2 less than the source's x1? Also false. Is the target's y1 greater than the source's y2? That's false. And is the target's y2 less than the source's y1? That is true. So that means no collision has taken place. Let's now have a look at an example where the rectangles have actually collided and see what comes out when we ask the same questions. Remember, just one needs to be true to prove a miss, but all need to be false to prove a collision. Right, so here we go again. Is the target's x1 greater than the source's x2? False. Is the target's x2 less than the source's x1? False. Is the target's y1 greater than the source's y2? False. And is the target's y2 less than the source's y1? Also false. So that means there is a collision. Let's go back to the code and see how we can structure all of those four questions into a single if statement. If the target's x1 is greater than the source's x2, or the target's x2 is less than the source's x1, or the target's y1 is greater than the source's y2, or the target's y2 is less than the source's y1. If any of those are true, then return false, no collision. And if we haven't returned false, then the only other possible outcome is that a collision has taken place, so return true. And the last function in this class draws the rectangle to the display surface. As this video is about collisions and not drawing, I'll skip to the end of this function. If you'd like to learn more about shapes and coordinates, click on the widget thing top right now. Well, that's the class finished with. So let's now create a list of 2000 rectangle instances using random X and Y coordinates and random width and height values between 20 and 40 pixels. We'll also pass the for loops index value as the rectangles ID. The next thing we need to do is to set the fill color of the first rectangle in the list green. This is because we'll be using that rectangle as the mouse's cursor and it helps it to stand out. Now let's go down to the main loop and make it work. At the beginning of the video, you may remember me saying that just for fun, we can stain the rectangles red by pressing the mouse button. In order for that to work, we need to ask Pygame for the mouse button data. And this is returned as a list of true or false values. If index zero is true, then the left mouse button is pressed. Because the first rectangle in the list of rectangles will be at the mouse position, we'll need to pass Pygame's mouse get pos function to the rectangle's set xy function. Now we need to iterate through the list of rectangles. Because the mouse rectangle is at index zero of the list, it'll also have an ID of zero. And because we want to draw the mouse over the top of the other rectangles, we'll skip drawing it within the loop and draw it after drawing all the others first. 
As you can see, R is now the current rectangle as we iterate through the rectangles list. Next, we test the rectangles to see if it has collided with the rectangle at index zero of the list, which, as we know, is the rectangle at the mouse location. We also know that the has collided function returns true for a collision or false for a miss, and we'll store that value in the variable result. So if result is true, we'll set the rectangle's fill color to red, but if the mouse button is held down at the time of collision, then the rectangle will be stained red permanently. This is done by toggling the stained variable to true. If result is false, then we'll set the rectangle's fill color to white, but only if it hasn't been stained. If it has been stained, then we'll leave it as it is, red. And finally, we'll draw the mouse rectangle. Well, that's it for this part of the script. Let's run it and see what happens. So over to the command prompt, rectangles, if I remember how to spell it. Oh, and we've got an error. Invalid syntax. Hmm, well, I think I know what I've done. When defining the list of rectangles, I've accidentally missed off a bracket within the list function. And so now we've fixed that, we'll run it again, and we've got another error. PAIM is not defined. I've missed a G out on Pygame. Silly me. Simple fix, and then we'll run it again. Whee, it worked. So let's see what's happening then. Every time we move the mouse, we're interacting with the other rectangles that are on the display surface. And as you can see, when they overlap, the rectangle turns red. And also when you hold down the mouse button, you can draw with it. And if you remember, I challenge you to guess the word at the beginning of the video and 10 points if you got code. Colliding rectangles are great and all, but most games don't use colored rectangles. They use sprites. So in the next part of this video, that's what we'll be looking at. How to use this technique to detect colliding sprites. To make this easy on ourselves, we'll continue using this script, but make some minor changes. So let's do that now. If you like, you can save this script as a separate file just in case your code goes bad. But then again, you can always re-download from my Google Drive. The first change we need to make to this script is to load in some images. Well, three of them. A white star, a red star, and a green star. These are to replace the colored rectangles from before. We'll also need to remove the width and height parameters from the class's initialization function because images have static width and height values. However, we still need to define the width and height within the function because the rect function we created earlier returns those values. To get the width and height of an image in Pygame, we'd normally call a service's getRect function, but in this script, we'll cheat because we already know the dimensions of our image. Next, we'll convert the fill color to star color and make the default star color white. And because we're now blitting rather than drawing to the display surface, we'll replace Pygame's draw function for the blit function. A change we made earlier to the rectangle class's initialization function means we can no longer pass random width and height values to it. That means we now have to delete that bit from the code. We also need to replace every fill color reference with star color. And here we're applying that change to the mouse image, which uses the green star. And here, if there's a collision detected, we need to change the star color to red or revert it back to white if not. But we can still paint if we press the mouse button, so only revert back to white if the stained variable is false. We'll now go over to the command prompt and run this sucker. Ah, yes, well, Looks like there may be a few too many stars on there to see what's going on clearly. Hmm. Right, so we'll go back to the code and we'll change the amount of stars on there. Right, so how many do you reckon we should do? 10. We'll just have 10 stars on the display surface so we can easily see how the detection process works. And now back to the command prompt to run. Ah, much better. We can see what's going on now. You may notice that the stars change colour when they're not actually touching each other, 
This is because while the images aren't overlapping, the rectangles used to detect the collision are. Let's have a look at a diagram to get a better picture of what's going on. If our sprite is diamond shaped like this, the effect of collision without collision is more pronounced. Here, you can see why. The rectangles overlap here, but the sprites are nowhere near each other. This is actually fine in most cases, because the player may not notice if the sprite is moving fast around the display surface. But if you're like me, and you think it's crap, then you'll want a solution to the problem. And the way I do this is to use margins. Margins, in this case, reduce the area in which a collision is detected. Here, the dotted line represents our new margin technique. And yes, the rectangles are overlapping, but the margins aren't, so no collision is detected. The margins effectively allow the sprite to get closer before triggering the collision. Here, you can see the sprites have moved a lot closer together. You may have already noticed there's a small problem. With our diamond sprite, there are portions of it outside the margin, which means that no collision will take place even if we see the diamond images have collided on the display surface. You can see this clearer in this last diagram. Unfortunately, the rectangle technique is a compromise between detecting collision and the shape of the sprite. You have to make up your own mind whether this method is suitable for your game. Let's add the margins to our script and see if it has any improvement. The first thing we need to do is define an X margin and a Y margin. I've chosen to reduce the collision detection by 12.5% from each side of the rectangle. And this is done by multiplying the width and height values by 0.125. I've also contained the multiplication within the int function just to keep all the values as whole numbers. If you find that 12.5% isn't enough for your sprite, then increase the value until you're happy. Now, we just need to update the collision detection code. But please excuse me while I separate this line into multiple lines, as I'll end up typing off the end of the video. Well, not actually, but you get the idea. Now I'm going to add the X and Y margins to the if statement, but it's a long and drawn out process, and I'm already aware that the video is 17 minutes in. So I'll speed this bit up. There we are. That if statement will now check to see if a collision has taken place within the margin rather than the whole rectangle. Let's run this beauty and see if it works. Here we go. Ah, oh, there we go, yeah. I think you'll agree that works a lot better. Anyway, that's the end of this episode. I hope you've enjoyed watching it. And please, if you have any questions, just ask. I'll be showing you more collision techniques, so keep this script handy because we'll be using it for the next one. Also, all the images and scripts are available from my Google Drive. Links are in the description. Bye for now.